the Chief Secretary to the Government of Telangana, Mr. Anjani Kumar, the Commissioner of Police, Hyderabad, Ms. Shekha Goel, the Additional CP, Crimes, Mr. D.S. Chauhan, the Additional CP, Law and Order, Mr. Tarun Joshi, the Joint CP, Special Branch, Mr. Avinash Mohanty, the Joint CP, Detective Department, Mr. A.R. Srinivas, the Joint CP West Zone, Mr. M. Ramesh, the Joint CP East Zone, Mr. P. Vishwa Prashad, Joint CP Central Zone, Mr. Srinivas, the DIG CRPF, the police officers and personnel of the Hyderabad Police, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a distinct pleasure and a privilege to be here amongst the most dedicated cadre of police officers and the police personnel of the Hyderabad police. Throughout history, the police force has played an essential role in maintaining law and order in our society. But the pandemic has caught all of us by surprise. After the Spanish flu of 1918, this is the most devastating pandemic the world has seen. And as rightly described by Mr. Anjani Kumar, it has been dubbed now as the Third World War that the humanity faces. It is true that none of us have seen the devastation of the First and the Second World War, and yet, day in and day out, we are seeing and witnessing the devastation of the pandemic. Initially, when the pandemic began from the borders of China, we were safe and secure, in the hope and aspiration that we will go unaffected. But slowly the pandemic has spread its tentacles throughout the world, hitting first Europe, then United States, and finally it arrived at our shores. The pandemic has raised new issues and new concerns. It has raised new logistical difficulties and called for new solutions. For the police, it has passed and posed exotic problems. How does one maintain law and order in such a situation? How does one deal with a large population consisting of the living and the dying, the old and the young, the affected and the healthy? During the pandemic, the courage, the spirit and the morale of the police force had to be kept high and the high-handedness kept low. With colleagues passing away every third day, with medical facilities torturing at the borders. It was a daunting task to keep the force on guard. It was indeed a Herculean task to save our people throughout this state. While sitting in the High Court, I could see the problem blossoming in its tentacles and its difficulties. What began as a battle within the GHMC area, slowly but surely, spread to other parts of the state. Therefore, it was equally our concern to see that things are done, that the rights and interests of the people are protected and promoted. At times, yes, the judiciary may seem and may sound like the tough taskmaster, but we must always remember that the goals of the police and the judiciary, of the executive and the judiciary, are the same. And the goal is to protect and promote that common man who has nowhere else to go except to the government, to the judiciary of this state. It is the common man who needs and who is indeed the center of our constitutional universe and therefore the focus of our point of view. It is not that we do not recognize in fact, repeatedly while sitting in court hall number one, I have emphasized that we certainly appreciate the endeavor. We are with full sympathy with the trials and tribulation of the executive of all of you. However, please remember one thing. Those who come to my corridors, who knock on my doors, they are not there to give an appreciation letter to the government or to the executive or to the legislature. They are the very people who feel that an injustice is being done, life is being unfair. 
when those people knock at my doors, I have a constitutional duty to discharge. I have as much responsibility as any one of you. And like you, I must stand my guard. I must discharge my duty. And my duty is to listen to the plight of the people, whether the plight, whether the complaint be right, wrong, different or indifferent. Therefore, when we pass our orders, we do not mean to berate anyone. In fact, let me tell you, we salute each one of you for the high sense of his spirit, for the moral courage, for the physical courage you have shown. It is not that we are unaware of the fact that our policemen have slept right through the nights in the hottest weather. It is not that we are unaware of the fact that 33 police officers have laid their life in this battle against a pandemic. It is not that we are not aware of the fact that at least 3,000, if not more, police officers have been infected by the virus. And yet, like a disciplined force of any other nation, we march ahead with our heads high, held high and with courage in our soul and in our heart that we will win and we will come out triumphant. To those police officers who have lost our souls, our heartfelt condolences to their bereaved family, our eternal salute to them, our eternal salute to all of you in this hall and those who continue to discharge their duties without fear or favor, without ill will for or affection, without wondering and worrying about their lives, without wondering and worrying about their dear ones. Let me assure you, we appreciate every single moment of your life. No matter what our orders may speak, no matter what our orders may say, but please remember, we are like a partner in a partnership. We have the right to correct the course. We have the right to request that please follow the law. It is not to say that you are violating the law. Let me tell you, in the hardest of the circumstances, each of you are like a shining beacon of light, not only for the members of the force, but for every single citizen of this country. Had it not been for your tireless efforts, had it not been for your hard work, I'm sure the migrant workers would have never reached their villages, their hamlets, their towns and their cities. I'm well aware of the efforts put in by the government. I'm well aware of the efforts put in by the railways. I'm well aware of the efforts put in by each one of you. In fact, so many people across this nation owe a big thanks to all of you because you have ensured that they've safely, securely reached their cities and towns, their hearth and homes. Therefore, do not ever underestimate your own capacity. There's an old saying, there are two old sayings from United States that I would like to quote. When United States was fighting its battle and its war of independence against the British crown, Thomas Paine wrote a very famous line, and the line is, it is the hard times that test our souls, that cull out the best in the human spirit, and I can assure you, all of you have come out with flying colors. The other saying in America is, trust in God, but pass the gunpowder. Keep your rifles absolutely squeaky clean. You never know when the next attack might just begin. Yes, we are all proud of what we have achieved, and I'd like to congratulate the police department in general and Mr. Anjani Kumar in particular, in compiling the experiences of the police department. Unfortunately, in our country, not much is written about the police. The police, for whatever reason it may be, it may be our lack of our own current situation. It may be because as a civilization, we lack a historical perspective, but not too much is written about the police. Therefore, I'm really happy that somebody has finally compiled the experience of the police force. And as rightly said, 
50 years down the line, when your grandchildren and historians wonder, how did we pass through this difficult phase of our lives? This book will be the primary source of information. To know this is how Hyderabad police had dealt with this pandemic. But at the same time, as Mr. Somesh Kumar, the learned Chief Secretary said, while we celebrate our victory, our triumph over the pandemic, we cannot afford to lower our guards. It is not the time to lower our oars. Already there are again dark clouds gathering in the horizon. Again there is a talk of a second wave. Again, there is a talk of China perhaps unleashing another set of virus. Many in the world would like to believe that this virus is not a natural one, as was projected. It has nothing to do with the bats eaten in Wuhan. Many of us would like to believe, and there seems to be some possible evidence to that effect, that this virus was perhaps man-made. The dissenters from China tell us that this is not the first war that China is going to wage against the world. This is only the beginning. Therefore, my request to all of us is to be on guard, to be aware, to be vigilant, to learn from the experiences that we have gathered in the last nine months, to redo our task, to realize where we went wrong, what were the lacunae in our planning? Because many hard times are about to come. But at the same time, let me convey my best wishes and my most sincere prayers for all of you. We, the people of India, and we, the people of the state of Telangana, are safe as long as you are safe and sound. We live in peace and with a sense of security as long as you all are hale and hearty. Hence my prayers for all of you, my salute to each one of you, and my eternal homage to those who, have, who are no longer with us in this hall. Jai Hind.